So hi, I'm Victor Muka from Paradox Cat uh, as software architect. So I'm doing Android since yeah three years, mostly doing automotive head unit on the platform level and mostly applications today. My name is Klaus Gassner. I'm director development. I've also spent a lot of time on main units, user interfaces and graphics. So back to today's star. <clears throat> so we would like to tell you about Ramses in a nutshell. That is a tool chain. For, so basically if you um, have a board available, or trying a new board with limited graphical um, resources, but you have visions for complex graphical challenges or maybe hard requirements for those, um, then um, this library might come in handy. So basic properties, it's a lean engine based on OpenGL ES 3.2, so it doesn't um, strip anything from the standard. It also does not add a lot of, or it does not add it, <clears throat> its own um, proprietary concepts on it. It is well integrated into Android, and that will be one of, or the major point that we want to explore today. Um, it scales well for very complex graphical assets where you might not feel the urge to do them um, manually in code. Um, yeah, and you probably never heard about it. So where does this thing come from? Next, please. <clears throat> the library was originally developed for BMW for its own use in the cars. Um, and this BMW is a big advocate for open source. Um, they published the graphics library as open source from the start which is quite unusual for an automotive company. <clears throat> so basically um, would have, or it has been available for quite a while and it has been powering um, the vehicle HMIs and cluster instruments of BMW since 2018. So basically, if you look into any current BMW, you will find this library at work. Um, I put some screenshots here of various examples, what's being done, those are all, real life examples, uh, <clears throat> a cluster instrument that is currently driving around, um, a preview of the climate control of the upcoming system that will hit the road in um, July. So I'm not leaking anything here. BMW was so nice to publish that in January. <clears throat> or an, an example car that we will um, see again later in a demo. So <clears throat> the tool chain has several components. So the core of it is the Ramses engine. Um, it is basically a rendering engine that um, takes a scene graph and geometry and textures and puts it into nice OpenGL graphics. It basically co compares to libraries like Filament. <clears throat> but in addition to that, um, there's the so-called logic engine or Ramses logic engine that basically adds the ability to react to events, to run animations, to dynamically mo modify the scheme graph and also scripting to encapsulate logic directly into the graphics and create intelligent graphical assets. And the whole thing is encapsulated in an Android library <clears throat> Sorry, so it can be easily integrated into applications. Um, the library offers bindings for Java and Kotlin, so it doesn't matter which you, which you do prefer. And to round off the tool chain, there is also an editor that runs on Windows and Linux. And that basically allows you to create the graphical assets offline and view them and edit them and test them and um, and then basically you export a binary file that contains everything that is needed and on the Android device you just need to load the binary file and um, have exactly the same graphics that you had in the editor. 
<clears throat> so you just need to update that one file. Um, this is a look at the editor. So it's basically a visual editor. You might think now that it looks basically like all the other editors. And yes, that's I would consider that a compliment. Um, that allows you to put together components into a working set of graphics um, to compose complex 3D or 2D scenes. Um, so it is really a composer. It does not create anything. You do that with the usual tools like Blender or um, Photoshop or GIMP um, and exchange it with that tool in open formats. It embraces uh, GLTF and tries to use it as much as pos possible. Um, and then here you conf configure the stuff, put it together. And um, one of the nicest features is that the editor is using exactly the same rendering pipeline as um, is used on the target device. So um, short of any really weird graphic driver bugs, you should see exactly the same thing here that you will later have on your device. <clears throat> so basically the concept of, of how to use the library is build your system with Android and let Android do what it does um, best. But if you need really challenging 3D graphics, integrate um, 3D elements um, and complex assets with Ramses. So basically um, mix the best of both worlds. So in the first example, we saw that it integrates with Android elements in the layouting. And now Victor will explain a little bit how, how much effort it is to use the stuff. Yeah, thanks, Klaus. So it wasn't so bad. <laughs> right off the bat, it's actually pretty simple. So there is one single dependency on this AAR, which uh, we've seen before, which incorporates both Aramza's engine and logic. And then, um, yeah, there is one single thing you have to do in the uh, Gradle settings uh, is to um, avoid compression for the files with extensions, uh, Ramses and AirLogic. And then basically you can create either a surface view or a texture view. And the pretty much only thing you need is uh, read, it, uh, read the assets, the binary files we were talking about, which you generated with the studio. Um, the G05 Ramses and G05R logic, which you can see here. And um, yeah, after you loaded it, you just plug it into the surface view, start rendering. And there you get it. So that's not pretty much uh, when you have a little more lifecycle management, obviously, and layout creativity, you know, uh, as you can see here in the screenshot, there is like a tab view here on the bottom with card view and uh, a logo. And um, yeah, there's not much more to it. Uh, except that, yeah, well, you have to manage the state somehow and all the usual Android stuff. Okay, and the integration into Android doesn't uh, stop there, basically, so you can put it among other instruments, among other elements in, in the layout, but you can also um, put stuff on top of the 3D elements and integrate them with them. So it basically looks like one entity. The concept for this is called anchor points. And the idea is um, that you define a place in the 3D space or also in a 2D asset. Um, and then um, it gives you the 2D coordinates within the texture view or surface view. Um, <clears throat> And you can basically then locate other elements, other Android elements on top of it um, or connect stuff to it. So one implementation would be putting icons or labels on certain locations in a 3D world 
or connect errors of other elements to parts of a 3D model, which is, which is notoriously ugly to do. Um, <clears throat> and basically, um, the, the, those 2D coordinates are made available in screen coordinates. And they can also be synced with movements or animations. So when the car is turning around or moving, um, you can get the current coordinates and sync with that. And we also have a nice little example of that. So um, I took the liberty of attaching an anchor point to the door handle of the car. And then Victor had some fun with that. <laughs> yeah. So it actually wasn't also too hard to do so we can see here the button i added a button which is in normal android button um, to the anchor point and i just let it follow it and um, if we have enough time i think i can show show it in action here live it's actually pretty snappy so i don't know if it comes over the video but you can see there is no flickering or some jumping things around. So when you open the doors, it keeps following it. And obviously it's interactive. So when you click on it, you get the toast here. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's also not so much code. As you can see, it's just basically finding the button by view, which I defined in the XML setting on click listener for the toast. And yeah, just changing the coordinates of the button um, on the observed anchor point. So coming back to the presentation. Yeah, so how, how do we actually make it follow the anchor point? Um, these are the main steps. Basically you have to get this node by name which klaus defined for me in the in the editor and it, the name is easy entry anchor and then once we have that we just keep the reference and um in in the overridden function of the ramses thread class i believe um, we have um we, we we have the updates coming uh, regularly and then we can get the coordinates and do something with them. So for example, expose the data, live data to the point uh, of, uh, and observe it from your fragment or activity. That's what I did for the demo. So then of course, there's the question, there's plenty of graphic libraries already in existence. Why not use another one? So compared to filament, um, basically you're lacking the scripting and the editor. So um, if you need to scale to large or plentiful um, objects, um, this might be more helpful. With some of the more professional environments, uh, there are sometimes license problems, like um, for example, the LGPL license with um, if you're using Qt. And typically game engines um, are most of the time too heavy, too heavy in the resource use for non-game applications. And very often they also want to build the whole application and cannot be integrated in smaller parts wherever you need them. So when would you use, or when might this library come in handy? So basically, if you have <coughs> complex, complex 3D graphics on a limited device, also if you need to create a large number of graphical assets, so you don't want to do that with coding, or a set of exchangeable 3D objects, so basically you can construct um, them with defined interfaces and then make them exchangeable by just exchanging the binary objects. And so that is something that would fill another presentation. I just wanted to mention it because it's very special. Um, Ramses is also capable to combine graphics from different apps or even different devices. So basically create parts of the graphics tree in different locations, send them around over network and combine and render them together. So that's a very special feature. Just wanted to 
mention it. <clears throat> of course, there's also cases when you probably would don't want to use it. <clears throat> um, yep. So basically, of course, if you have mostly um, 2D stuff, um, Android does that just um, <laughs> all by its own. Um, if you need a full standalone 3D application, um, then it is um, also not recommended because it is just filling the 3D graphics niche and it's heavily relying on Android for work like handling input events, handling layout or text rendering. So that is stuff that it not um, covers, that it does not cover. Um, and of course, if hardware limitations are not a problem for you, then you can also use a much heavier and larger system. <clears throat> so in conclusion, it's a quite powerful 3D graphics tool chain. It integrates well with Android, not only putting or living besides Android objects, but also um, integrating behind and above them so you can really create a unit it's available as open source so this is true for the whole tool chain for the engines as well as for the editor and even the 3d car that we have been showing <clears throat> it's all available or the, the whole source is available under the mozilla public license um, which is a quite liberal license that should be suitable for about any purpose and it is in active development. So since it's being used in the HMI of production vehicles, there is a lot of industrial support behind it, but uh, let's say it's not limited to that. So um, namely BMW is very open to feedback and is welcoming that. Um, and so it's, it's not a monopoly thing. If you are interested, there is also a home page or an anchor page um, that gives you the most important facts and also links to tutorials, sample stuff, and basically a small small guides on how to get it set it up and get it running if you want to play around with it yourself. Yep, that's about um, all that we had to say. Okay. Fantastic. Well, thank you very, very much, uh, uh, Klaus and Victor. So certainly I learned a lot from that. I'm not um, much of a graphics person, um, but yeah, that looks like a really good solution. And I really love that it's so open source with a nice permissive open source license. Um, so um, let's open it up for questions. We have uh, uh, 10 minutes or so to, uh, to handle this. So questions. Who wants to ask uh, Victor and Klaus? I got a question. Um, your surface view, can you draw transparent? Um, I'm thinking, can you, can you draw any standard Android views behind your 3D graphics? Yes. Cool. <laughs> yes. So I cannot show you any examples because that is work under NDA, but um, there is plenty of real life use cases where exact this is being used. So you have Android, you have 3D object on top of Android. And as I said, if you're grossly going crazy, we have another Android object on top of 3D. Awesome, thank you. And do I get the impression that this is available for other operating systems, not just Android? Um, so basically it comes from the support for, for Linux and Windows. And I think the rendering engine also for integrity from old times. And now basically when the, let's say many paradigms shift toward Android, it has also been given a new generation with Android integration. Fantastic. But you could just as well um, take a recipe on Linux and have fun with it there. I would have another question. Um, you've mentioned filament yourself. Um, have you thought about using filament as rendering engine um, and, and, and get your additional features on top of it? Or is this, is this just a no? 
Um, okay, now we are getting in the area where I don't know how much I can tell, but let's let's just say yes, the thought had has been considered. There was an evaluation. And um, let's see, the, the, the directions in which the developments were going uh, were, were found incompatible, especially it was, let's see, it was a little bit annoying that filament created their own shader language. Um, well, basically all the previous and existing work is based on um, GLSL. Yeah. Um, so it was basically, um, yeah, was considered or turned out to be quite a problem that they are not using, that they, that they created a new shader language and all the existing work um, would need to have be started from scratch. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. But in the future, are you going to support Vulkan as well? I think it's only OpenGL at the moment. <clears throat> okay. Um, there are initiatives towards that, but they have not reached the public level yet. All right, thank you. Okay, Leslie, I think you have a question. Uh, yeah, um, I the editor itself. It was you said it was for Windows and Linux only. Is there going to be a Mac version? Because most of our customers are on Mac. That is also an ongoing development. So at a time in the future that I can't really tell you because it just has started, a Mac version is intended. Um, unfortunately, before that um, cannot be used on a Mac because the desktop version requires um, OpenGL 4.5 and Apple decided to only support it until 4.2. Okay. So it unfortunately will not run in a virtual machine. No. But as I said, both, both to both questions, I know that there are plans, <clears throat> but I cannot say more. So sorry, I do have another question. Is so is this going to be an open source project where contributors can assist, or is this purely a paradox uh, project? Well, basically, <clears throat> contributions and um, so, or contributors and contribu contributions are welcome. Um, I must openly admit. So basically, um, BMW and Paradox um, are watching a little bit about the architecture. Um, but basically, um, any contribution that is basically <clears throat> acceptable in the contributor terms is welcome. Also, okay. um, let's say, let's say more users and their experience. I must admit that there is not a big community yet. But that's, as I said, untypical for, um, for a car maker who is, um, let's say, who tend to keep everything top secret. Um, BMW is very interested to get more players aboard and also um, yeah, very interested into the, in their feedback. It's basically a strong belief that a tool is just as good as basically the use cases it can support. And it was never intended to be a ivory tower creation. Okay. Okay, super, thank you very much for that.